Hi. You're nice. Being too nice. Um, hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here to present to you some of my work. Uh, my name is Mathieu Witz, and I come from Paris, France. Um, the vast majority of my work, not playing. Sorry, yeah. The vast majority of my work deals with using Blender, but I do wear um, let's say multiple hats. On the one hand, uh, I'm the CEO of a company that is called Focal Expertise, which deals with the video analysis and the 3D reconstruction of complex events um, using heterogeneous sources. Uh, we mostly work for the French justice uh, or other institutional projects. To get a better idea, uh, idea of what we do, I highly recommend watching the amazing talk from Nick from Forensic Architecture from last year's conference. On the other hand, uh, I've been involved over the last 10 years, uh, first as a PhD, then a researcher, and now freelancer on some research projects that led to the development of an add-on that is called Blend DIC, that is now um, used by aerospace engineer for performing what we call virtual material and, exper um, and structural experiments. So I will take the remaining 18-ish minutes uh, to tell you the story of that add-on and how it helps engineers doing their job. So let me first explain to you what uh, we call material and structural experiments. So as researchers or engineers, we usually have to solve real life problems. Um, we see something that we want to understand. In our case, sometimes it would be the cracking in reinforced concrete. We want to predict to follow the tip of a crack that would uh, go along a beam. A first stage, when doing so consists in conceptualizing the problem, basically making a, a mathematical model of the phenomenon. Once this is done, we may produce a computer model ba that basically translates the equations into some code. Some experiments can then be performed, um, sometimes at different scales and there are different assumptions, in, um, to prove the computer model as well as the mathematical model. During all these steps, multiple sets of data are generated in order to validate the whole process. So I will be focusing in that talk on the last step, the experimental part in between the computer model and proofing the real world phenomenon. So when designing new material or structures, uh, we must study what we call the mechanical behavior of um, of these materials at different scales in order to answer different questions. Uh, the questions are going to be how will the um, structure deform? How will it crack? Um, what is going to be what we call its mechanical response to given mechanical stresses? So the uh, experimental campaigns that I mentioned uh, may require to test more or less large structures at um, using more or less complex or big machines. And in this talk, I will refer to uh, samples, which are rather low scale pieces from a few nanometers to up sometimes a few centimeters, or structures that are assemblies of these samples and that can go from some centimeters to um, much higher uh, pieces like meters. Each scale will provide some very meaningful information. So these experiments uh, may be difficult to set up though. Uh, depending on the shape of the sample, on the, um, as well on the phenomenon that we want to characterize. If it's going to be purely mechanical behavior, if it's fatigue, if it's coupled problems like magnetomechanical problems. So I told you earlier I was going to tell you a story. That's what started as a non-funded research project and that ended up not being an add-on. That is de developed in partnership with a French startup company called Ecosim and has that is now being used by engineers in the aeronautics. Uh, this add-on is called Blend DIC. Probably guess that the Blend part is for Blender, and DIC stands for Digital Image Correlation. So what is DIC? Uh, to put it simple, with no math or symbols that would scare the hell out of you, um, I showed you here a representation of what is a 2D, two-dimensional DIC test, what it looks like. So we have a testing machine that you have here that is going to be pulling on a sample. 
And while it pulls on the sample, we have a digital camera that will be taking some pictures at different time steps. And we will basically record the formation of the sample, and especially um, these dots, black and white dots that we call a speckle that are, that are painted on the sample. And by looking at how these dots move, we can see cracks appearing, but we can also get to the mechan me mechanical behavior of the sample that is being studied. Depending on um, how the sample will deform, on how large it may be, one need to use one digital camera, usually for 2D motion, two digi digital cameras, that's what we call a stereo system for 3D motion, or uh, when it gets larger, well, you need multiple sets of these cameras for each surface, for example, that we will study. Um, I mentioned classical cameras, but one may also use thermal imaging, high-speed cameras, or a mix of all of them that might be required. And so that involves, in the end, lots of cameras, machines, cables, stands, light systems, and all the structures that you need to hold everything together. So to give you an impression of what the overall pipeline looks like um, at this figure, so as I mentioned earlier, we start with a simulation and, um, and a design. We want to measure something. Then, uh, when the simulation is done, we go to the experimental part where we have to set up the experiment and do the actual ex experiment. That will generate a lot of data, in our case, mostly digital pictures, that we need to post-process to extract uh, mechanical information. This first part is, let's say, um, virtual. It happens like on a computer. Um, and well, it may take a lot of time weeks, up to some months, some time to be able to code and prove the code. Uh, but the most costly part is probably the experimental part, which, because it requires a lot of people. You need engineers, technicians, researchers all together on a machine. And so the setup itself can take some week, and the experiment part, well, it depends on what you want to do, but days a week. If everything goes well, the post-processing is going to give you what you're looking for. If not, you have to start to, from the previous step or start over if it doesn't match the real phenomenon that you're trying to understand. So something like 10 years ago, if it's going to move, uh, a colleague told me, can your free software you told me about last blend something uh, can model a real digital camera. And I was, yeah, I guess. And so um, we started investigating how we could use Blender as a tool uh, for designing these complex experiments prior doing them for real. We have one specific experiment in mind that I'm going to show you right now. It is a beam column assembly. So it is a reinforced concrete structure. The beam is kind of two meters long with a cross-section of approximately like 12 centimeters. And there's the column, which is one meter long, which is quite a big structure for experiments in the lab. Um, so the beam was clamped, so it was blocked at uh, its two ends. And on the column, we were kind of moving the end of the column just like this, like this kind of snail pattern that you can see here. The goal was to study the cracking at the node, so the junction between the beam and the column, see how the cracks would appear on that, on the top surface, but also on the rear junctions. Um, and so that's what the test had been done, and what's, that's what it looked like. If you think it's a mess, you're right. It was a mess. There were 10 digital cameras, multiple light sources, um, that were required cables everywhere to power and transfer the data. A huge machine here on the bottom left corner that is called a hexapod that was here to enforce this kind of nail pattern that I showed you. And, um, and cameras going up to three or four meters high. It took something like three to four weeks to set up this whole test, which means you cannot use the machine in the meantime. You cannot, it was using all the digital cameras available, which means that other researchers could not use these cameras for the test. Um, and so, yeah, it was a very complex experiment to set up. 
just to show you what the post process looked like. Uh, here are the results of the top surface of the node, and the researcher were, re researchers were able to show here in kind of bright lines the cracking patterns appearing while loading the sample. So all the bright lines are cracks, basically, uh, which look nice, but we're not completely consistent with the theory, with the math behind that. Mostly because at the clamping of the beam, it was not perfect, and it started rotating a bit. So the real results were not matching what was expected. And remember what I said, when it doesn't match, you have to start over again. So what we did was rather to do some kind of post-experiment retro engineering. Uh, we modeled the test that already existed to compare the virtual images to the actual ones. And we, the goal was to see if modeling all that in Blender prior to the experiment could, like, we could gain some time on the actual setup. So we could see if some zones might be occluded, if the light source were at the right place, if the cameras were well positioned. You have here, for example, four images on the 3D model, four views from the cameras. Uh, and even though the positions were slightly different from the real test, what we thought that is that the 3D model was matching our needs to um, pretty good to the real experiment. So what we basically did was to add some kind of extra step in the pipeline, in the virtual part of this pipeline uh, that I showed you earlier, uh, which consists in prepa preparing the full experiment in 3D in Blender prior to uh, doing the test in real life. The goal was to significantly reduce the setup time from weeks to only a few days, even the experiment, so to improve the conditions, but uh, most importantly, try to avoid this kind of feedback loop and avoid any problems that, that would make us start all over again. We published these results a few years ago. Uh, even if, to be honest, it was a bit difficult because to find a publisher because people uh, were kind of reluctant to see 3D as something that was just looking good. And so all, the, all these things look, like, uh, look good in the lab where uh, the people are used to using the tools and routines on a daily basis. The transposition to an engineering lab um, was not straightforward, as people may only perform a handful of tests a year. So that's why, uh, as I was starting freelancing, I decided to team up with a French startup company called Ecosim, to, uh, which is specialized in software developing for this kind of specific test, the IC test, and that they already knew and used Blender. And so we developed an add-on, Blender DIC, that would make engineers' lives easier, at least when it comes to using Blender. Among the different specs, well, probably the first one was they wanted a lighter UI. I guess it happened to everyone to when you open Blender for the first time and you see all the panels, all the things like that, and it kind of scared them. So they wanted something that would only contain the few buttons that they might need, and all the routines we had developed would be put in operators. So they would just have a kind of a cooking recipe to, um, to work with that. And so what mattered the most to them was the ability to load their simulation. So start from the simulation on the material, put that in Blender, live deform in Blender, and take virtual pictures, and output these uh, rendered images in deformed configurations as well as camera locations, for example, all the, the, the camera parameters in order to uh, optimize their test as much as they could. Um, that's what we pretty much did over the last four years, raising Blend DIC as part of a tool called EcoTwin Virtual that starts by converting the, um, the simulations and then helps the, uh, guides the engineers through the whole process. And it is part of a suite of softwares that will not only help them set up the thing, but also post-process and validate uh, their data. So here's an example. We have the design office that work on uh, the simulation of a crash of a dummy. Uh, here it was probably something that looked like a plane crash. Both the displacement of that dummy, if I can load, play that again, maybe, yeah. Both the displacement of the dummy and the deformation of the base of its seat here were important to measure. 
So once they had the simulation, they went, uh, they talked to the experimental um, office and told them, okay, we need to design an ex we need you to design an experiment that would measure the deformation of both the dummy and its seat. So this, this is kind of fake experiment that was made to prove the overall process here. And so the experimental team was able to model their test in Blender, blend, uh, loading the geometry first, testing it, rescaling the speckle if needed, adding some environment and some digital cameras. So one stereo system that would focus on the dummy and one system that would focus on the seat in order to, um, to measure what they wanted. They were also able to add some markers on the dummy in order to have some kind of um, reference points uh, in the scene. And so once ready, the engineers could live preview what they were doing based on simulation files and uh, compare their render the images and compare that to um, the actual simulation. Here, hopefully, they would find the same thing. Uh, but with this uh, pipeline, they could try different things, different lighting systems, different cameras, and everything. There were quite uh, some challenges in developing Blend DIC for this kind of thing. Uh, the first one was the ability to feed 3D mesh data from the simulation directly into Blender, and uh, Ecosyn developed a converter to extract the data from the simulation, and I developed the importer, custom importer that was feeding this data directly into geometry nodes attributes in order to live deform everything according to the scientific uh, data. We also needed some extra information in, um, in the way we handle digital cameras, the cameras, so in bby.data.cameras, in order to remember the models of cameras we were using, remembering like which stereo systems, so which, uh, which cameras were paired together, for example, as well as a custom depth of field uh, tool that we developed uh, that is slightly different from the, the one uh, in Blender. And the, the most interesting part was uh, to have a custom render routine that would take into account heterogeneous digital cameras, so with mostly with different resolutions, which is not something that Blender nat natively does. And so here, we, we might have different types of cameras, and we needed to take that into account when rendering. So back to a dummy, the simulation was done. We could go to the experiment where you can see we have these four cameras. Um, the environment is kind of, um, there's more than what the engineers would put. It was just kind of to show off for the conference. But uh, what you can see, there's like a LED panel, these four cameras that are targeting at uh, our dummy. And once ready, we could render these four uh, sets of images. The render is mostly done in EV. Um, if we need some more complex lighting systems, we could switch to cycles, but usually deforming the sample like that for 10 to 15 time steps for these four cameras would take four or five minutes. Basically, the time for the engineers to go get a coffee. And when they come back, they can process these different images in their favorite software, which is in our case, Echo Twin DIC, to get the measurements of the deformations of the um, of both the dummy and uh, the lower part of the, um, of the seat and, com and compare that to their simulation. So that was just one example of what we can do. I didn't go into too much detail because it would get a bit boring with the, all the, the other possibilities that BlendYSC can do. Uh, but there's tons of plans in the future for this add-on. The first one being code refactoring and taking into account more and more, um, using more and more geometry nodes, especially for live computing, tons of stuff like depth of field when you start moving cameras, uh, but as well as handling uh, procedural environments that can be useful for uh, the engineers when designing what they want to do. Uh, we also plan on using quite extensively the uh, asset libraries so that users can build their own with their own machines, their own cameras, their own all the gear they might have and accessories, uh, but also providing some that are usually common to all the different tests uh, engineers do in this kind of industry. There are also plans for uh, a cool part, which is the optimization toolbox, where what we can do, for example, is determine the camera location and angles depending on um, a given quantity of interest, so using routines that would directly optimize the, the location of the different cameras. 
But there are multiple other examples of what Blender can do to help researchers um, and engineers in our field. Uh, another project we've been working on is to use, uh, for example, here a robot on which is mounted a digital camera. The idea is to lower the number of cameras that would be used during a test uh, and add more flexibility in the setup, moving the camera at the spots where that would be the most interesting uh, to get the most relevant information. It's still an ongoing project. There's still lots of work to, lots of things to working on. You can see the glitches on just moving the camera, targeting one spot. And at some point, we're not even sure we'll be able to do that just in Blender. We may have to pipeline that uh, with other softwares. Um, but that's the kind of things we're working on. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, feel free to reach out during, after the conference, if you have some ideas, questions, or remarks. And um, I would also like to thank the many people that directly or indirectly worked and contributed to these projects in code debugging and just providing some cool ideas. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference.